possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Right. It's over the bar. Hello, welcome to the RTGA podcast. Mikey Stafford here with Rory O'Neill. And we're joined by our former friend, Kevin McStay. Who's he's jumped the fence. He's jumped, jumped the fence, Mikey. Yeah, he's here I now. Hope I hope I'm still a friend, Mikey. Ah, yeah. no, oh, always. But you're wearing your you're wearing your mail livery now. You know, you're no longer a pundit. You are now a member of the uh, the GAA. You know, you're now an active member again, Kev. You're back in combat. Um <laughs> You might, you might, you might actually be on the front line for a few months yet. But how have you found the first couple of months? Because I, I imagine you've been busy since you were announced. Well, and even busier before that as well, uh, Mikey, because it was, um, as as you know, uh, it was a very rigorous competition. Yeah, you have to get together a backroom team of seventy four thousand people. <laughs> the we we put a we put a lot of effort uh, in preparing for the interview process, and were we glad we did, because. Um, uh, it was, as I said, it's very. It was a very rigorous process. Um, I, I've done interviews in my time for promotion in the military, and uh, <laughs> this one was right up there with it. And uh, and and of course, the quality of the other teams uh, was very evident as well. So we were thrilled. We were thrilled to 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 get the nod, and uh, you know, we we had been looking at different bits and pieces even before that in, in the hope that we would get the nod as you have to so you hit the ground running so to answer your question the few weeks since then have been very very busy it is a big workload as y- you guys know this um but it's also been very very nice it's I, i've been down in mayo a lot i had a, a family wedding down in, in west mayo as well that lasted a few days down there so i met a lot of people I've been at the matches, meeting a lot of people as well, and uh, it's been very, it's been very pleasant. Uh, the lovely thing about the appointment, the early appointment, I for I've the guts of four or five months in terms of planning before the first ball is thrown in at the end of January, so we should we should be able to get a very good preseason uh, in that space, and then get ready for that for that big match on the on the weekend of the 29th, 30th of January, whatever it is. Yeah. Well, you you mentioned the 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 teams you were up against, and that's what it was. You know, Ray Dempsey, Mike Sullen, and and Declan Shaw each put to. Were you surprised at that, or like had, had you any inkling? Because obviously you decided the way I've tried to get this job before. The way to get this now is, you know, I'm you know I'm the I, I'm the the head of a ticket, but there's a serious ticket. Obviously, it's Steve Rashford, uh, 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 Donny Buckley, Liam McHale, and Damien Mulligan is your backroom team. So you thought, right, the way to get this job now is I'm going to have this kick-ass backroom team and nobody else is going to be able to touch it and then when you saw what others had come with did you say oh shite everybody's had the same idea <laughs> yeah well uh, it was it's always interesting the way these competitions pan out you know in your own head you you have a, a game plan of how how you're going to work through the weeks before the competition actually and when is the best time to make pick a move or whatever and very often then events take over and you have to go a little bit quicker than you perhaps you had planned and that was all in it as well i mean uh we certainly went out uh early with with uh, our backroom team um but in a very in a very organized way it wasn't it wasn't uh, reactionary or, or reckless or anything like that i i'd uh, i'd certainly let the principal officers aware that i was going to apply for it and uh, that I, I had these uh these fine men with me uh, and uh, that I was going to give it a shot. Uh, I felt I felt that courtesy. He, he certainly deserved that courtesy, so he wouldn't be blindsided. And we mm. and we did it that way. But of course, um, it for forewarned, I suppose, perhaps the other camps and fair play to them. They really they really came up with uh, very strong opposition. I mean, signs are on it, Mikey. If you look around, what has happened a lot of the members of those um, those applications are now working are about to start their work with other counties. So it was formidable, they were formidable opposition. It was great that Mayo could attract that level of um, of competition and caliber in the teams. And so I, I take great strength from it. Hmm. Kev, just out of curious, curiosity, really, I suppose, I know you have, um, you've coveted the job, I suppose, for a long time. I think, look, the, for a lot of us, the dream of playing inter-county football or hurling 
is is a pipe dream by and large and obviously you, you achieved that and played at the very highest level and played in all Ireland finals and the next best thing I suppose then really is to manage your county and you obviously were in charge of the under 21s back as yeah. far as 2004 is would that be uh, a bit that, earlier 2001 99 to 2002 uh, 90, 90, period, yeah yeah, yeah. Like that. So, so so that was the that was the first steps to, to manage in mayo at inter-county level but to actually then be appointed as the mayo senior men's inter-county manager when you were told the news what was what was going through your head uh i got the news Five minutes, literally before the county got the news, it was it. You know the 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 county chairman, and I have to salute him for this because I don't think there's secrets anymore left in this world. But he um he was ringing the disappointed candidates, uh, obviously around the half six seven o'clock mark. He had an executive meeting at seven, and then the delegate meeting at half seven, and uh, he rang me here in this very office. Uh, my wife was with me, my 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 children. And it was, oh, it was very, uh, like, I mean, I was, it was very emotional for me personally, uh, because, and, it, and, and, and I think it's, in, in, and then of course I had to sit on it, <laughs> I had to sit <laughs> on it, for, like, my family at home in Mayo were, any news, any news, mm. I now knew I had it's like, it's like, it's like the white smoke and the Pope. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, but uh, the chairman, Seamus, asked me to hold on to it till 25 past seven, so I absolutely honoured that, uh, and, um and it all worked out fine, but my family down in down about an hour going balubas. They were down in the <laughs> kitchen waiting for for results. Um, so it, it was very emotional for me because, and and I think this is really important, fellas. And I've said this to to my friends. There, there's a sense like that I was chasing this job all my life or something that, and and that was something personal, a box I wanted to tick. And it's not really, it's not really that. I, it, it's not. I didn't want this for Kevin McStairs. Uh, in, I felt I had something to offer Mayo, or because of my experiential uh, life, if you like, or, and then the things I'd gone through, good, bad, indifferent, uh, highs and lows and all that. I felt that there was, you have to have that belief that you can contribute, you can make a, a contribution. And I really did feel, you know, I'm in a space where I have a lot of knowledge now, I have a lot of experiences, and I had got the backroom team I wanted. You know, I'd, I had said to the chairman at interview, if any of those guys had said no, I didn't have backups. Like Mikey Stafford wasn't the backup to Stephen Rochford, and you weren't the backup to Donny Buckley. Well, that's a really slap good. in the face, but anyway, <laughs> go on. <laughs> they were, no, the, the point I'm making is that those lads were either with me or I wasn't going to go. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's I, I had sat down, I'd carefully chosen the caliber of person I wanted, the, the, the experience that they needed to have in terms of coaching and managing. And you know, I think I I think I did a decent job in bringing bringing that group together. And they all stepped up and said, "No, we're in this now." And then the minute we were in it, the, and that happened very quickly after James after James um, resigned, very very quickly, that team was in place. It was very funny and sometimes frustrating to see it playing out in the papers that all these guys were going with other teams. <laughs> but what do you do? You, like that's just yeah. part of the part, part of the build up, I guess. Yeah. But, you know, once I had them, I I knew this was a this was a good a very strong group. And once they we were all together, then they said, well, "Okay, now let's really prepare for this." And you know, there was there was great preparation went in to the to getting ready for the interview. And thank God we did because, as I said, they threw the kitchen sink at the four <laughs> the four teams uh, at the interview. Um, we'll get onto the backroom team in a minute, I suppose, but but to stick with yourself for a second, you know, it was 2018 when you, you stepped down as Ross Common Manager and, you know, you, you took the time to write quite quite a quite a lengthy and kind of detailed kind of um, statement uh, at the end of it. And, you know, the overriding <laughs> sense to a lot of people was that you were you were burnt out, you were worn out from doing a, a job you thoroughly enjoyed doing and you didn't say anything else and you, you had success. But you said it was challenging and sometimes exhausting, and you 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 said you know this is me. I'm I'm kind of done with intercounty management. So, is it just the lure of managing your home county that's dragged you back in, or is it like kind of what made you kind of change your mind? Although like, I change my mind every five minutes, so for someone to change his mind in four years isn't exactly a crime. I'm just curious as to kind of what was the change. No, it it was absolutely the lure of my county, my own my own county. Um. It, it wouldn't have happened for any other county. Let me put it that way. I'd had 
I'd had a fantastic time with Roscommon, which I look back on very fondly. Would make no apologies for my my time my time there at all. I, you know, we we gave it a great shot. We had a lot of fun. Uh, we won we won the cups we could win, uh, and then at the end I was exhausted. But I, you know, I've had a four year a four year rest, if you like, and then. I, I didn't even see this coming, and that's been very truthful about it. I thought James would 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 hold on. He'd done a lot of very good work with the transition uh, of of the players, and he was bringing together another new group, if you like. Incredible uh, work, actually. To be absolutely, fair, yeah. yeah. I mean, absolutely I mean, that, incredible job. Yeah, and we're going to benefit yeah. from that. I've I, I've uh, every expectation we're going to benefit from that, and uh, and then uh, he 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 uh, he he left the post, and. Then obviously some friends and and myself. I'm of course I'm I'm human. I think well maybe could I could I could I and then I immediately said well if I'm in it now, I'm in it. I'm all know, in. I'm all in. Correct. Yeah. And uh, and that's where the genesis of getting the best backroom team I could get together because I had this sense why shouldn't Mayo have the best people available out there? We're one of the top three or four or five counties, six counties in the country, you know, we're very passionate about our football. You know, you know this. Um, and so I, I went, I went chasing them and, you know, got them into a few headlocks and wouldn't leave their, wouldn't leave their houses until I certainly got a sense that we're going to say yes. And very quickly it came together then. And then, as I say, if, you, if you're in it, you're all, you're all in. That's, that's, that's what this game, that, that's what this game demands. Mm. No. I was down yeah, the lure, the lure yeah. just to, to, to finish, Mikey. Yeah, the, it was Mayo. It was my home county. That's mm. that was the one job. That was the one job I would change. I, I changed my mind fairly regularly too, Mikey. By the way, <laughs> so I, wrong with that. I, but I, on, on this one, it was yeah. Roscommon had been super, and if Mayo ever came up someday, I probably there was always a chance someone would convince me. And in the end, I convinced myself. Yeah. I, I was down in Mayo um, on Saturday, actually, Kev, and um, and uh, chatting to a lot of the locals and great welcome as usual and very friendly. And obviously the conversation will always, you know, head into football territory. And there seems to be a really good, ex- there's, a, there's, a, there's an excitement and there's a huge air of positivity around your appointment. I think I got the, the I didn't obviously let, any connections being known and I was just curious to kind of get a, gen- a genuine and an honest appraisal of what people thought of the appointment and it was a prevailing sense of positivity but that brings pressure and I think the Mayo job is a pressure job is that something that you know that you're prepared for is it something that you think is is something to be worried about or is it something that you feel that you should look or just embrace it and just run with it? Well, you're well aware that there was lots of pressures in the Roscommon job as well. Mm. Uh, different pressures. The Mayo... The, the Mayo, profile of Mayo, though, the, the Mayo <laughs> job has a profile and the Mayo football team does have a profile, as you said, it's right up there with the top yeah. three, two or three no, counties. That. Yeah, no, and, and, and of course there's pressures going to be involved and those real pressures will happen at the end of January. Um, but in the in the interim, you know, you can talk about pressure and it's there, of course it is. I mean, our, the book I wrote was called The Pressure Game. So yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I certainly feel it the same as every other human being feels it uh, for sure. And and I do, I do realize the mayor job is a very, very big job, but the pressure doesn't paralyze me, if you, mm. if you like, and, and can never, like, I mean, look at the people I have around me to help me deal with the stresses and strains and pressures of trying to manage Mayo. You know, managers, inter-county managers in their own right, coaches of inter-county teams uh, in their own right. So there's a huge experience and certainly I will be delegating responsibilities and roles and, and, and pressure points to all of them. Um, I, I, I don't get bogged down in real time with pressure. You live through it and you come out the other side, oh, gee, that was, ooh, that was a t- tough one or whatever. But uh, you, you, have to, you have to get on with it. And, and I have, you know, I have a good philosophy around sport in general. I've been around a lot of sports, so I know it's a very marginal game. You know, like Mayo could be, could be All-Ireland champions at any stage over the last 20 years if, you know, a ball bounces 
left or right. There's, there's no question about that. So, you know, I, I, I was lucky to be involved with an, an All-Ireland winning club team. You win by one point with the last kick of the game. So, you know, that makes us marvellous and, and, and the, the, the losing team nowhere. I, I understand all that. That's mm. the measure. That's the measure. That's the level we're at. But it doesn't take away from, from the fact that, you know, two things will happen in my four years. It'll work out or it won't work out. And I'm not going to completely sweat what's going to be in between. I'm going to live through it. I'm going to thoroughly prepare and, and, and we as a group will make sure may are presented in the best possible uh, light to contest these games. And the hope is, of course, that it will be the, um, the former, that it will work out. That's what we're all working towards, of course. Yeah. And so there's no point in beating yourself up in anticipation of what's coming down the line. It's coming down the line anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, I guess the question, you're, you, you're obviously, you're being officially unveiled later this evening at, at McHale Park. I'm hoping there's smoke machines and dry ice and everything, Kev, if there's any justice in the world. Um, and I know the question, one of the first questions that you're, you're going to get um, will be um, Stephen Rashford, Tony Buckley, Liam McHale, Damien Mulligan, Kevin McStay. What are you all going to do? Like, like some people will think that's an awful lot of cooks in the kitchen. So uh, you obviously had a role for everybody in your mind when you were putting together this backroom team. So are you in a position to tell us kind of yeah. what the structure of the backroom team is? For sure. And um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, make sure I don't make an error with, <laughs> I, don't want to, I don't want to give, give them their uh, wrong names or uh, we've met, we've met obviously. <laughs> that, uh, that is, that is it's a good, good start. That's a good start. Um, so, uh, Donny Buckley is a coach and selector, um, and he'll he'll assume the head the head coach responsibilities for the for the group. Um, obviously, hugely experienced, been at this rodeo a good few times now. He's almost more male than than s- 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 some of ourselves. Uh, certainly, he's worn the jersey qu- quite a while. Um, uh, did I mean, mention Stephen? I did. Mm. Not not his role. Oh, no. Sorry, excuse me. Stephen is the assistant manager and coach. Um, Damien Mulligan is coach and selector, and he has uh, additional responsibility for club liaison. So he's just come out of that that space, and uh, he's highly rated. We we rate him. I rate him very very highly. We rate him very highly, and he's a great lad. Um, and Liam Liam McHale, you know, he is he's a coach and selector. Additional responsibility for the county under twenty uh, liaison. Uh, so you know we we expect to have uh, certainly some crossover with the under twenties of 20, 20, 21, 2022. Um and indeed the, the current group the twenty the team that will play championship in twenty twenty three. So we'll be look, we'll be you know talking about the very best lads in in those groups and see how they can be further yeah. developed. D- 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 Donny D- would D- yeah Donny would be seen kind of as a kind of a guru on pressing and and tackling. Will he be having kind of a more defensive coaching role, or is is that going to be kind of split up? Yeah, more evenly that, that would that would be that would be what I'd, I'd expect it to go. But I'm not I'm not going to um, box off anybody. You know, don't want to be too prescriptive. Yeah, 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 I'm not going to be too prescriptive about it. Um, the 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 big thing is their knowledge and expertise. That's the first thing yeah. that they have coached for many many years. Um, I think I, I gave a number to Sean, Sean Moore, and I think 169 championship games we've coached between us. That's a lot of lot, a lot of games. You win some, you lose some. You learn from all of them. I hope. So I'm hoping. I know they will bring that experience to the to the coaching arena in, in McHale Park when when we're getting down and dirty. And uh, I see I see Lee McHale having having views on how how we how we uh, construct. Defensively, I see Damien absolutely having strong views on that, uh, and so there'll be there'll be nights that Tony will be up with the forwards, and working with with uh, with Rochi, with Stephen Rochford, uh, and myself perhaps uh, peeking in over the fence, giving my top and safe me work too. That, that's it, it, it. It's a collaborative thing, Mikey. It's, it's mm. you can't be too prescriptive on it. Um, but you know what we will sit down and be very sure about is the direction of travel, our philosophy what we're trying to achieve, that vision will definitely be there and well set before we hit the preseason. That will happen in the next few weeks about how, how we want to go about it. And then, of course, we have to take into consideration who we're playing every time. You know, it can't be the, the one, one, one size won't fit all, I'm afraid. And Kev, on that, I mean, I think one of the things that has always attracted people to Mayo and Mayo football and the Mayo teams that played under Stephen and played under James was their style. 
you know, that swashbuckling style, gangbusters, you know, all out, uh, every, you know, all attack when we have it. The style of play, and like maybe there has been criticisms in that, you know, in the past that that hasn't been, but there's been flaws and weaknesses in that particular approach, given the fact that maybe it leaves them slightly susceptible at the back. What way would you see, you mentioned obviously that it, it isn't a one size fits all and it will depend on opposition, but is there going to be a particular type of philosophy in, to, in, in terms of your approach to how Mayo are going to play football? Well, look, every style has, has, has its, you know, it, its weak points and every style will attract criticism of one sort of another. You know, if you're swashbuckling, the, crit- the criticism is you're loose at the back. If you're mm. 13 behind the ball, the criticism is you're not going to win major matches without an attacking a- angle. Um, again, my viewpoint is that the style that we'll adopt will be the style that get, is getting us the wins. Hmm. You know, we saw that with Kerry. I mean, Kerry are very yeah. pragmatic this year in terms of you know they were you know they they had to uh, they had to bite hard on their own maybe principles and philosophies and traditions to yeah. you know implement well, a more defensive approach yeah. and obviously well defense is key. I mean, yeah, I mean championships, winning championships are built around solid defense. That would be certainly something I would totally accept. And I would be insisting upon, you know, you, it's very hard to build championship, championship wins if you're if you're loose at the back and, and conceding big scores. So there is a balance, and that's the balance that we have to hit. Um, but that's what the next few weeks and our meetings will be about. The five of us will have air time, and we'll be banging tables and debating and uh, and trying to decide well. Who are the three or four now the best fit that role? If that's the role we go down, have we the players to fit the philosophy that we're trying to develop, etc. So my my sense is Mayo always has good players, plenty of players. You know, there's over 55, 56 clubs in Mayo. You know, there's always players uh, in Mayo. Um, so we would we would certainly be a winning a winning style. Rory is what yeah. I would say. It supersedes everything else, really. It doesn't it, it answers you know, like, all criticisms. Yeah. If yeah. if the wins, if the wins are coming, mm. life becomes a lot easier. You know, the, it's very easy to bat back questions then. But there has to be you no, know, there has to be sense to it, and it has to suit. It has to to be the advantage of the type of player we have. And but again, I think we have a, we have a broad range of players that will fit into into the philosophy that, that we as a management decide. And the players will, will have a certain say in it as well. Should they have to have? They're the yeah. ones that are going to go out and execute it. And we have a lot of experience in the group. You know, that's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, some people see them, oh, they're at, at, at the tail end. Not at all. Not in modern football. These guys are in great shape and keep themselves really, really. Like I'm going around to the club championship matches. And, you know, for the most part, the people that are dominating them are the people you'd expect to dominate them, which are the county players. Yeah. And that's very satisfying for me. Are you confident? Of, uh, like, because obviously there's some guys who there's question marks over, you know, maybe they're placed there by the media or maybe not. But, you know, Lee Keegan, Aidan O'Shea, Kevin McLaughlin, these guys who have been, they mightn't be that old in terms of their actual age, but in terms of the amount of football that they've played and miles on the odometer, it's a fair amount. Are you confident you'll get everyone back you want back? Well, as I speak to you now, Mikey, nobody has contacted me. They know I'm the manager now. They know uh, they have my number. We wrote we wrote to all of them. Um, my my firm hope stroke belief is that they will all all stay around and 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 discuss these things with us. Um, my personal message would be to everybody out there, you know, have really good club championships. Whereas there's would you believe 24 matches each weekend, Mikey, that we have to scout, and we've been at them. We're on week week three now, and we have a break this weekend. But the following week is the third round. Um, the championships are outstanding. They're very, very, very high. It's quality. a very healthy club championship. It is a very healthy. Yeah, yeah. I'm mean, I was at Knockmore Ballina at the weekend. Big crowd, great atmosphere, and, and a terrific game of football. And um, so, you know, I would be saying, get stuck into your championships. Make sure you're catching our eye on a regular basis. And some of the players you've mentioned, and, and others, like there's a, like there's a lot of lot of others that uh, are, are in in the group. Yeah, you know, I would say don't make don't make don't make any don't make any rash decision. Put on your safety belt, put on your helmet. It will be a great spin, uh, and you know, drive on. 
Uh, when you're a player at that stage of your career, uh, it's better to hang in. If only out of curiosity <laughs> to, see, <laughs> to see what might happen. Um, they've given incredible service to Mayo, and it's my firm hope that they will continue to serve Mayo during my period. Yeah, the um, that's the thing with these guys. They've they've heard a lot of voices now. A couple of them, a couple of times. A lot of managers who've come in with a lot of hoopla. Some have come on, come in under maybe you could say a little cloud of um, uh, there'd be a little bit of controversy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yours has been a very a very smooth transition. But I suppose the thing you'd be interested, uh, these players would be like probably interested now to think, you know, well, now this guy off the telly, this guy from the newspaper, well, you know, what's his great idea? This is a bit of a tangent, but I read a very funny, not really a review of the new Michael Flatley film by a guy called Seamus O'Reilly in the Examiner the other day. And basically, he was just saying, people say it's, an, uh, it's a vanity project, but he said every book, every album, every movie is a vanity project because. There's so much out there at this stage that adding even one more book to the canon or one more movie to a cinema listing, it's all, everything is vanity, everything is ego. So, you know, it's in, in the same way, taking a job like this is similar to that. And I think they just like to know, you know, why does Kevin McStay think he could do any better than the, you know, the cast that went before him? And I guess that's what we all want to know, Kev. And most of us, from our connection with you or our connection to Mayo football, even tangentially, probably do want you to do better than the guys that came before you. So tell us how you're going to do it, Kev. Well, you see, that's, that's the madness of it, Mikey, is that my, my my management group, of course we think we're going to do, we're going to, we're, go, we're going to be the bit that makes it happen. You have to believe that. It, there's a kind of a certain, it's a disease or a madness. <laughs> it, but you have to, you have to believe that, you know, you look back and you look at Stephen, uh, at James, uh, John Mahan in his time, etc. cetera, uh, John O'Mahony, like everyone is getting very close. So the madness and the disease suggest to you, well, maybe we could just get it that little bit closer and maybe get the job done. That, that's, what, that's what motivates you, what drives you on. And to the idea that uh, there isn't an, an original thought out there and you might be right. Um, well, they'd have never heard our five voices in the same room at the same time. <laughs> and uh, I hope, you know, we will bring something new or different. And that might be just the, the little bit. I mean, everybody before me has given it a great shot. They really have to pour their heart and souls into it to try and to try and to try and uh, get Mayo to where the, everybody wants us to be uh, in Mayo. Um, so yeah, the hope is that um, we might we might be able to supply something just that little bit that small ingredient or whatever. I, I it's impossible for me to say it at this stage, but I, you know I'll repeat. I think everybody should strap on, put, you know, <laughs> and come for the spin. Uh, it'll it'll it it it, it uh, it's it'll, it'll be interesting. Mapping out the season, Kev. Yeah. Ob obviously, um, the championship is taking a a whole new look in 2023 and moves to a round robin format post provincial championships. Which of which Mayo are guaranteed to be in by virtue of their Division One status. So does that change the approach and perspective uh, towards this year's or this ne next year's Alliance Leagues? And by virtue, is everything then geared maybe towards that round robin stage of the of the of the of the All Ireland series? And is that kind of where the season really starts? Or do you see the league as a separate competition to win in its own right? Maybe unearth a couple of players if we can get them, maintain our Division One status. Like, is there different ambitions to apply here if, if facing into the season? Is I, I'd be interested to try and understand how managements are now going to approach this new format as we face into 23. No, it's smashing. That's smashing question, and I'd say every manager, Rory, uh, is because it's a new. It's we're all, it's it's uncharted waters. Well, let me put it this way: no, no, none of us have ever have, have lived through the season mm. that's ahead of us. Mm. It's a paradigm shift, if you want. It's a it's a new it's a new look. Um, what we've been doing uh, in our planning is we've been trying to get it into four blocks: the the, the preseason stroke provincial league, the national league, the kind of championship. The Ireland series. Yeah. It's a season of 20 games, lads. 
well, if you're to yeah. if you're to get to the third a week. Big, a, a big five. panel, a big panel required, Kev. But certainly, and even more, like a big panel just is numbers, Rory. Mm. A, a big panel where the changes are pretty much seamless. That's what you require, you know. So a bench where Rory O'Neill is popping in and it makes no difference that Mikey Stafford is, you're going to get the same and hopefully a bit more. That So you really have to have a, I'm sorry, Mikey, I'm beating you up here today all the time. The, it's uh, all right, Kev. The, um, but you, you see the point I'm making, you know, if, you, if it's 30, 34, 36, all of them have to be contributors. You can't have just sandbags at the back of the panel taking up room. Everyone has to be has to be contributing. So the the we we've kind of sensed that you won't win the kind of championship in your preseason, but you could lose it in your preseason. So preseason is crucial now because once the ball is thrown in at the end of January, it's game on game on game. There's no there's no blocks left. You know, there's only two weeks between perhaps the league and the beginning of the kind of championship, maybe two weeks between that and the round robin, probably only one week to the quarterfinal and then two weeks home. So you, you get a sense of it. It's 20 matches in 28 weeks, mm. something like that. Uh, and now you see uh, what, why your preseason is so, so important. And that would be something we'd certainly be driving well, 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 Could Could the preseason shift, though, Kev? I mean, like, the reason I ask is, because I am curious about this, in that yeah, we saw last year, for instance, the way Limerick more or less dismissed the National Hurling League. They just didn't bother with it at all. And look, look what happened in the end. They ended up All-Ireland Champions again. We saw in football, Dublin being relegated down to Division 2 and came within a whisker of defeating the eventual All-Ireland Champions in, a, in, a, in an absolute blockbuster of a semi-final. So I'm just wondering now, even with <coughs> the seasons having the season having sort of, you know, shifted very differently in terms of well, your, pri your priorities could could that mean like for instance your preseason might begin in february and you train through the uh, the national league and yeah. try is, is the question i suppose is timing your run has that altered with the approaching format okay again that that's a good observation but i'd park the hurling immediately because our league is linked to the championship correct the yeah, 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 yeah. that's the first thing i would say um the the idea that you can you know i'm not suggesting for a minute you peak in the in the off season in the pre-season that that's it hold that for seven months that can't be done but you can certainly have a, a stairway you know where you're at you're at a high level for one league you can uh, deload or you know take a break and then re re re, re, re reload again Definitely. That's, I mean, I mean, I, I think I'd stop your whole argument by saying you do know that Kerry won the National League and went on to win the All-Ireland. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, uh, and they took every, like, the National League games, fellas, are big, big matches now. Mm. They're big attendances, they're on TV, people put a, a lot of effort and in it. And in Division 1, you're playing high oh, ca high calibre, high calibre yeah. they're, big, they're big building blocks for finding out who can cut it when we get into the championship arena. Um, mm. And it's a big building block for trying to establish your best 15 and the group coming after that has to be uh, hugely competitive because we will dip down to 30 plus players in the season. I, I, I've no doubt about that. But just, just to finish it out and, and, and give you a sense of, of the, the challenges ahead of us, I just jotted down a few, a few notes, lads, um, that... These games are literally week on week. So you have an FBD that runs straight into the FBD provincial leagues that run straight into, into the league. So there'll be seven games there and there may, I think there may, may or may not be a final this year. Yeah, so um, we do much training there. Yeah. Well, well, it's weak. Like it's, it's pretty much maintenance and recovery. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that, that's what's going on. Now there will be other people that are in rehab from other injuries and you're trying to work your way through that, but that's, that's the same for everybody. Um, the, the league then will, will give you a certain status in the championship uh, and winning your championship, your provincial championship, which I'm on record as saying this is a big block in every team's development, in my, in my, in my um, opinion. Uh, that also gives you advantage in terms of the round robin. Okay, so you're the number one seed if you can win it, or your number two seed if you're beaten, and then there's your first match at home if you're the one seed. So... All these things are in it. Then you're, you know, you're avoiding other teams on other sides of the draw. It all depends on where you come. So there are advantages, and um, I think for a management team in its first year, 
you know, we would be anxious to be hugely competitive in every game. So we'd be, I know you don't want to hear this and it's cliched and all that, but you know what I'm going to say. We Take each game, take each game as it comes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all you can uh, do. He, he's that's over the fence now, all right, Rory. He's over the fence <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, on the provincial championship, though, Kev, it, it is still linked, I know, in terms of the seeding, but it has been denuded somewhat. It's not quite the same. You know, it, its relevance to the latter stages of the championship isn't quite the same because, as Rory said, your place in the round robin is assured. You don't have to go into a qualifier if you lose a provincial championship, etc. But curiously, with Connacht now, I can see why it is important to you because, you know, your near neighbours, beloved Galway, um, are kind of the, the cock of the walk now at the moment and All-Ireland finalists and turned everybody's heads um, last season. So the Connacht Championship may not quite be as significant in the grand scheme of things, but I would imagine for a new Mayo management team going in, the Connacht Championship is still quite important. Huge, huge priority for us. And obviously there will be the Roscommon narrative as well. You know, um, they, they'll also be under new management. So there's going to be that um, pep in the step as well. And probably the bit you may not realise, but I'll just throw it into the fire now because of the nature of the Connacht draws. And, you know, we have New York and London in that draw. There's a rotational aspect to the draw over a five-year cycle. Um Galway, Mayo and Roscommon are in the same pot and there's only three of us in that pot for the quarterfinal. So straight away now, that's who you're playing, you know, unless you're the third team out. So it's not going to be simple. This The Connacht Championship is going to be incredibly competitive um, and there's an All-Ireland contender uh, in the, in that pot already in Galway who've had a you know very strong season that they'll be wanting to build on. But uh, that's that's where we'll that's where we'll be at, and, and we can only get to that kind of championship by having a step by step good league, and we can only get to that league by having a really good preseason. So that's the flow. That's the flow. But it's a four phase kind of a four part um, season that's ahead of us. There's the preseason FPD, then there's the, there's the league, there's the provincial championship, and the All Ireland series. And that's I think the way all every manager will be looking at it. Every team, every group will be looking at it. It's the only way you can look at it. Mm. Because, we, Kev, because we've never lived this championship before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kev, Kev, just um, I, just one other thing that I'd be slightly <clears> curious <throat> on because I heard James Horan mention this as one of the big challenges he faced when he was Mayo manager. Um, obviously Mayo had no home games in the uh, National League last year. Now they obviously Mikhail Park is back open again, and that's going to change for 23 but in terms of training facilities, he found it quite difficult because Mayo don't have. Uh, the center of excellence per se and they were having to kind of move around to different parts of the county working with the county board budgetary concerns dealing with all of that side of it which is nothing to do with football what are the big challenges there yeah well the the, the first thing to say is you know, i got a lovely tour of the stadium from the staff down there and we were out on the pitch looking at the pitch is absolutely magnificent oh yeah it's fantastic yeah, oh my god it's yeah. it's it's mm. it's gorgeous and uh, it's in Super Nick. Um, so we have we have Mikhail Park back to us. Um, and, you know, again, we will be working very hard to make this a place that's hard to come to, to and, 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 and to beat us in. And that, that will certainly be on our things to achieve list, uh, if, if at all possible. Um, the facilities is a bigger question, um, a tougher question, Rory. Um, but I've had, I've had very detailed talks with the chairman, um, we have a few a few uh, proposals in, in in line. Good proposals, strong proposals to fix this issue. Uh, and I, I'm not I, I'm not in a position to say okay. what deal has been done yet. But we're we're very hopeful in the next couple of weeks of solving that issue uh, once and for all. So whether it's around a host club as as we had um, uh, when I was in charge of us, Common St. Bridget's hosted us, and we. We did it. We did. Um, we had an understanding with them and the board. Um, that may happen with a a club in Mayo. Uh, we might have to tease it out. Maybe a Connacht level at the at the Centre of Excellence. You know, Mayo had the use of that for times uh, under James, uh, and so on. But let let me put it this way: um, we will we will come to a very satisfactory solution for the current senior team. I've no doubt about that because the board are completely. There's still many. Is there still many guys uh, commuting from Dublin, Kev? 
And again, I'm not avoiding the question, but we haven't chosen the panel, Roar. So oh, no, I, sorry, I, I sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cart before the horse. I can't, but <laughs> my my um my sense is that has as as the players have got older, they've tended to return. Yeah. To, to the show COVID probably played a part yeah and COVID football, that's, yeah. Uh, that has changed things but look there's surely going to be a handful plus um, but let's let, let's see where our facility is first and then mm. let, let's see what our panel well, is well, well Kev if you, ever, if you ever want to stage a behind closed doors game in and around the Dublin area I might be able to source Donna you Bates, a, a, very, a very, very good facility. We've hosted inter-county matches before uh, and effectively behind closed doors. So, you you know, you, I, I can give you a good in there. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are, you, are you cheap? I think it's your cheap. Very, very cheap, Kev. Very cheap. <laughs> um, we appreciate your time, Kev. I'll let you go in a minute, but I couldn't let you go without getting your, just your thoughts, seeing as you've, you, your passion to get back into this job is, is uh, palpable. I just wonder what you think about the fact that your old job, Ross Common, is as yet unfilled. Monaghan, Monaghan, Donegal, Monaghan. 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 Yeah. There yeah. seems to be, it, there, there's two schools of thought here. There is a reluctance to jump into the pressure game, as you uh, rightly call it. And the second thing is the likes of Kevin McStay are hoovering up a lot of potential managers to be part of their backroom team. So there's less fish, yeah. there's less, there's less fish for the county boards to get on a hook. I was just wondering what you thought about it. Cause it's on you, two of them are your division one rivals. Sorry, yeah. three of them, three of them, three are, of them, three three of them. provision. To, uh, sorry. Yeah. Division one rivals without a manager at this stage. It's, it's unusual, isn't it? Um, it is, but then you see, see, you have to go back to when, 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 when did they find out they needed a new manager? So there's those there's those those aspects to it as well. I'm obviously um, right in the middle of of, of Roscommon here, and of course I, I'm tuned into the local chit chat about it. Um, first is uh, every county is going to want to get the best one they can possibly get and the best fit for them. Um, so that doesn't make the job simple. The the I think you were saying people are reluctant, Mikey. Not I, that has not been my experience. You will always find somebody like I take Ross Common, Donegal, and who am I leaving out? Monaghan. Monaghan like, yeah. They're Division One teams. That's hugely attractive to an ambitious young manager, middle-aged manager out there. You know that that's now the problem is it might be too challenging. They might prefer to go to a, a lower division team, but you know where do you jump in in your life? Uh, a, a, a chance like this comes up, people people will grasp it. Um, I think what has happened is you can see that the quality of backroom teams that counties are putting together is hoovering up perhaps the talent uh, that is out there um, because to compete at the highest level, that is the standard. You know, you have to be trying to get the best guys in every discipline you can get. And um, I think the, the, those, those three counties will certainly want to resolve it. I'm not going to tell them obviously how to do their business. <laughs> But um, they will want to resolve it because so, they're in the middle of club championships. And I have found definitely my appointment in late August, early September. I can't fully remember the date now. Was anyway, so was, yeah, no, it was around the 22nd or 3rd, I think, wasn't it? Mm, was it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think it was. And um, that has been a huge advantage to me personally to get to the matches. It has been very, very satisfactory to get down to Belmullis and... Mayo and South Mayo and West Mayo and get into these into these grounds and meet people and see the players. That is an advantage. There's no question about it. You see with your own eyes what the standard is and who's who's able to cut it. So I I, I imagine you you'll hear news on all three fronts very very soon. I'd imagine so too. Um, okay, Kev, thanks very much for your time and. Um... We probably won't hear too much more from I, you, you now. Rory, we'll put in an interview request in each of the four blocks of the season, and he can reject them. Uh, we wish, we wish, we wish you, we wish you well, Kev. And yeah. we just make one request: if Mayo do win that All Ireland, you know, your first podcast back after on the on the week following, you have to come back here and just tell us how it all happened. You know, 
Well, I'll be on at some island in the <laughs> South Pacific. Oh, they have Zoom as, there too, as well as, Zoom as, there too. As, as well as the population of uh, yeah. the whole of County yeah, Mayo. Yeah, have Mayo will be with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks for the podcast. Thanks also. Thanks very much for your time over the years. It was yeah, great, no problem, Kev. Fun. And the so very best of luck. A new journey, new challenge. But I, I'll see you on the highways and byways. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much, Kev. And uh, we'll be back then. with you all next week. And we'll chat to you then. See you, Kev. Goodbye. See you, fellas. Good. Bye, bye. This, how much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a score. Oh, there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. 